Reese Witherspoon. I have to say. Dated a girl in high school just because she kind of looked like Reese a little bit. I said, you know, what I love about you is like you're this young guy, but I can honestly tell that you know a haircut doesn't make a performance. <laughs> This January, Mondays are from the heart. So get excited. They're here! They're here! For unconventional relationships. Shut up. Making new friends. This was fun, right? Yeah. Junior high crushes. Do you think about girls? What are you kidding? I want to get into a good school. And doing what it takes to make ends meet. How was the food, folks? That bad, huh? From the Heart Mondays, this January. New details in a pursuit that went through five Valley cities. We break down the 20 minute chase in moments. Also a mission man missing for months is found. His body discovered hundreds of miles from the valley. It's cloudy and cool outside right now, but it'll be cloudy and downright cold by tomorrow morning. Details coming up with Channel 5 News at 5 begins right now. From the Valley's News Channel, this is Channel 5 News at 5. Downright cold, pretty cold. It's about to get cold. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm Melissa Correa. And I'm Oscar Ozami. Temperatures expected to drop into the 40s tonight. Chief Meteorologist Tim Smith is the man with the plan right now. So, Tim, what do we need to know? You need to know cold is the key word. Temperatures will drop into the 40s by morning, and a lot of places will probably be in the upper 30s. So, wind chill advisory is in effect right now. That's in effect from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. Wind chill values between 20 and 30 degrees late tonight, early tomorrow morning. So it is going to be cold. Actual air temperatures by morning are likely to be in the 30s across much of the area with windy conditions. Look at that. 32 to 38 across most of the valley. Not quite as cold as the island, but even there, 42. And the wind there probably a little bit stronger. So that's a look at your lows for tonight. And that probably will happen between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to take all night to get there. And when you head off to work or school in the morning, we're going to be right around those numbers. And then we're not going to warm up much. It's going to stay in that area pretty much all day tomorrow. So count on some cold temperatures moving in. A little bit of light rain and drizzle as well. It's going to get messy for a little while. We'll update that forecast for you coming up in a few minutes. New details on a pursuit that ended in a wreck. Two drivers, a suspected smuggler and an innocent victim are still in the hospital. Border Patrol agents and state troopers chased a car for 20 minutes and here's how it went down. About 746 this morning, agents spotted illegal immigrants running to a car near the Anzal Duas Bridge. A group was apprehended. The driver took off down Old Military Highway and then turned north onto Sherry Road. He drove onto the expressway and jumped off at 23rd. He drove down to the city of Hidalgo and then headed back up north onto 23rd. Yeah, then he moved eastbound on the expressway to Cesar Chavez and exited. Somehow, he ended up back on the expressway and he headed west before exiting South Cage Boulevard. You know, and it was there that he crashed into a car at the intersection of Cage and Ridge Road. He and the female driver he hit were hurt. They were taken to the hospital, set to be okay. The suspected smuggler was in that white Chrysler 300. He is now facing charges for that pursuit. And agents say the woman will have to cover the damage, or at least insurance will have to cover the damage to her car. Yeah, though for some folks, that's just too heavy of a cost for them to swing. For instance, a smuggler barreled through Maria Rodriguez's home two years ago. Yeah, she still can't pay for the damages. She has a warning for the Valley now at five. It topped our newscast November 15th, 2012. A car packed with pot punched through a South Mission home. That was crazy. A 20 year old woman bailed when the hood hit brick. And start looking for some place to, to hide. And then they go into a restroom, and then here, and then the police get inside my house, and the Border Patrol too, with, with the guns. The headline became a headache for Maria Rodriguez. In 47 years, nothing like this happened around here. Nothing. I'm, I guess I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, In I a mean... sense, I'm, that was my bad day or lucky day, I don't know. It seems to happen more and more. Luck running out. Because nobody helped me. Nobody do nothing for me. Not, not the Border Patrol, not the police, not the, nobody. Has come to the rescue of the soon-to-be 65-year-old. My son, 
my daughter-in-law and my three granddaughters. They can't find the $7,000 needed. This that I have. A single page of a police report. The diagram doesn't do the damage justice. We tried to, to save. save. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's for that wall. Lawyers didn't stack up. Her calls to U.S. congressmen fell through the cracks. This thing's going to be continuing. Sometimes people have luck to, to they help them, but not us. Proof even a 47 year old home out in the middle of nowhere can have its luck run out. Rodriguez says she called Congressman Henry Cuellar and never got a call back. So we reached out to him and we're still waiting. We want to know if there's any possible help for Innocent Valley folks who were directly impacted by those smuggling pursuits. New information this afternoon on a mission man who disappeared about two months ago. The wife of Jose Vargas confirms he was found dead on New Year's Day in southeast Texas. Orange County deputies discovered his body in a wooded area east of Beaumont. Deputies say Vargas was found unclothed, his body badly decomposed. Detectives think the body had been there for several weeks. Autopsy results are pending. State troopers are hunting down the driver involved in a bailout this morning. It happened near an Edinburgh high school. The driver of a Chevy truck blew through a stop sign and hit a Ford Expedition. That expedition had about 12 people inside and they bailed right after the wreck. The whole thing happened near Economides High School around 9 this morning. The school district SWAT team was activated because folks were running towards the campus. All students were okay and the high school was never placed on lockdown. The driver who ran the stop sign was checked out at a hospital. Breaking new developments, updating a story that we first uh, brought you uh, about two months ago. A woman now facing charges for a deadly rollover near Alton. One child died, several others were hurt. This happened back on November 26 on FM 681 near Moorefield Road. Our Kirk Chason in our studio with these late breaking details. Oscar State Troopers say 31-year-old Cristina Garza Jimenez was the driver of the SUV that crashed on that day. There were 12 children in the vehicle. Investigators say Jimenez lost control before it rolled over. Eight-year-old Alexia Salazar died at a Mission Regional Medical Center. Nine other children were transported to local hospitals for treatment. Garza now faces one count of criminally ne negligent homicide and 11 counts of endangering a child. Troopers arrested her yesterday. They won't say what led to the charges, whether it might have been because the children were not wearing seat belts or some other reason. Garza has been booked into the Hidalgo County Jail. The Sheriff's Office has not released her bond information. Live in the studio, Kirk Chase on Channel 5 News at 5. An Edinburgh woman who was shot last night is out of the hospital. We first broke the news during Channel 5 News this morning. The woman who has not been identified was shot in the leg at the corner of Fay and 22nd Street. Edinburgh police say she is not cooperating with investigators. She initially told them she was shot by someone in a black car as she walked down the street. Police clearly need more info, so if you can help, call Edinburgh Crime Stoppers at 383-TIPS. A woman pled guilty to giving potentially deadly liquid silicone injections. Well, today she told a judge she wants to change her plea to not guilty. That decision has some major consequences for the victims. Our Rebecca Young is live in our newsroom after spending the day in court. So, Rebecca, what happened? Well, as part of her plea deal, the woman who administered the injections, her name is Noemi Mimi Gonzalez, agreed to pay the medical bills of one of her clients, a client who faced the amputation of her legs due to the injections. The bills are projected to reach $50,000. Now, Gonzalez was to pay $22,000 by today's court date, but instead of handing over the money, she handed over a motion asking to withdraw her guilty plea. Gonzalez claims she felt forced to plead guilty by her former attorney, that she basically didn't understand the consequences of her plea. Her former attorney and the prosecutor in the case adamantly denied Gonzalez's description of those plea negotiations. The judge will decide the issue at a hearing next week. Now, Gonzalez faces two to 20 years in prison. The assistant district attorney on the case says Gonzalez's crime deserves the maximum sentence.
I really think 20 would not be excessive uh, based on the injuries and the fact that the, the victim, Corina Rios, almost died. And, she, and even at one point, even if she hadn't died, she was about to lose her leg. And it really came close to being amputated. So uh, I definitely think the high end is not out of the question. The judge said if he denied Gonzalez's request to withdraw her plea at the hearing next week, he'd proceed right into sentencing. In the meantime, the victim, who appeared in court today, faces years of reconstructive surgery and at least $50,000 in medical bills. Now, we'll have more at 6 o'clock, inc including details from police investigative reports, reports that list at least 19 other victims in this case. For now, live in the newsroom, Rebecca Young, Channel 5 News at 5. A veterans clinic in El Paso is closed a day after a gunman killed a doctor. CNN's Andrew Spencer shows us how the FBI is now taking the lead in that investigation. The shooting sent William Beaumont Army Medical Center into lockdown. The alleged shooter is dead and we have one casualty. That casualty is deceased. Speaking on condition of anonymity, an official at the Pentagon said the victim was a doctor. The official said the gunman died of a self-inflicted wound. Today, the Veterans Affairs Clinic where the shooting happened is closed. Veterans who had appointments are forced to reschedule. Big questions linger the day after the shooting. Why would someone kill a doctor at a VA clinic, then kill himself? Authorities aren't sure. The FBI has taken the lead in the investigation. We have hundreds of potential witnesses, and we are processing those right now. Those people were here seeking medical assistance, so we understand the difficulties that this situation presents to them. The Department of Veterans Affairs released a statement saying, in part, the safety and continued care of our veterans and the staff will be our focus throughout this situation. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. And just before news time, the shooter uh, in this story identified as Jerry Serato. The 50-year-old was honorably discharged from the Army in 2007. Serato was a former clerk at the Veterans Clinic. The FBI says he had threatened the same doctor he gunned down last year. An official in the Mexican border state of Tamaulipas resigned. Homero de la Garza Tamez stepped down yesterday as Social Development Secretary to take care of personal affairs. The resignation comes three weeks after U.S. prosecutors say $1.1 million in his McAllen bank account were linked to bribes. U.S. authorities have since seized that money. We first told you about it back in December. U.S. prosecutors say Thames took bribe money from contractors, then transferred it into the McAllen account. Terror in Paris, mass gunmen attack a magazine's offices. 12 people are dead. And minutes ago, French authorities say they've identified two of the suspects. Did Air Asia come to pick up the weather report? No. The station chief who gives weather data to pilots flying out of Surabaya Airport says Air Asia Flight 8501 never picked up its logs. So what's the airline saying to cover its tracks? Hear from them in 13 minutes. Stick with us. Breaking news. Breaking stories. This is Channel 5 News with Oscar Adame, Melissa Correa, and First Warn 5 Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tim Smith. This is Channel 5 News at 5. It's Lax Legendary January Clearance Sale. Save up to 65% off South Texas' largest selection of name brand furniture and mattresses. Up to 65% off bedrooms. Up to 65% off living rooms. Up to 65% off leather. Up to 65% off Serta, Simmons, and Restonic mattresses. With zero down, zero interest for 24 months. Plus save 70% off thousands and thousands of accessories. Lax January Clearance Sale. Hurry before these deals all clear out. We gave people a mind-blowing ride in what they thought was our most advanced Ultima race car. Then, we just blew their minds. It's just crazy that this is like the car. I was just it. The 2015 Nissan Altima with blind spot warning and zero gravity seats. Choose the 38 MPG Highway Altima, starting at just 22,300. Altima, from the most fuel efficient lineup in America. Shop choosenissan.com. Nissan, innovation that excites. 
catch me if you can. I mean, just steal. Well, I'm Mike Stone. Oh, I'm Rockford. Major Gregory Boynton. McGarrett. Columbo. Peter Falk. I was hoping you'd say that. You can run. Now hit the street. But you can't hide. I'm gonna do some nosing around. Get caught by me. Even you won't be able to catch up with it. You wanna lay some money down on that, Colonel? Catch me if you can. Does anybody have the time? <laughs>target individuals and leave what would stop them from doing it in any other location, including the United States. Charlie Hebdo has been threatened several times in recent years for its caricatures and controversial cartoons. In 2011, its offices were firebombed, an apparent retaliation for a cover featuring a spoof of the Prophet Muhammad. A Paris prosecutor said the magazine's editor was killed today. Reactions poured in from artists all over the world, showing their support for the French magazine and free speech. President Obama called the attack cowardly and evil. He spoke to the French president today and offered the full support of the U.S. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. You know, this is late breaking. French police say they identified three men as suspects. Two of them are in their 30s and one is 18 years old. Police say the trio are linked to a terror group out of Yemen. Grab those coats, blankets, whatever you need. Cold weather's making its way toward the valley. When we come back, we'll track the cold weather and update your forecast for Santa Monica, Santa Rosa, Olamito, and the rest of the valley. Thanks. Pizza Hut, 11 bucks. That's right, any Pizza Hut pizza, just 11 bucks. Enjoy your classic favorites like pepperoni and supreme, or explore new flavors with pretzel piggy for friends, family, or just a night in. Pizza Hut, 11 bucks. Looking for designer glasses? Get Coach, Fendi, Armani, and many more for the best prices at iMart Express. Or choose two complete pairs, frames, and lenses for $59.71. Two pairs with no-line bifocals for $129.71. All with a free one-year warranty. And you can wear your glasses today. We'll text you when they're ready. You get a lot more for less at iMart Express. Most insurance accepted, including Medicaid. In Brownsville next to Target and in McAllen next to Applebee's in front of Burlington Coat Factory. Ten outstanding Valley High School seniors received $1,000 scholarships through Student of the Week. A total of $10,000 awarded for academic excellence. Thank you, Bird Ogden Dealerships of the Valley, International Bank, Lax Furniture, McDonald's, and Channel 5 News. Pizza Hut fans, are you ready for this? Great pizza and awesome wings. Some things just go together. And at Pizza Hut, we get it. That's why we're giving you a large pepperoni pizza and eight wings for just 16 bucks. Now that's something to celebrate. Pizza Hut, make it great. And now, First Warn 5 weather with Chief Meteorologist Tim Smith. Well, just in time for the cold weather that's moving in. Some much-needed coats today. Jackets, scarves, caps, everything. Donated by all kinds of folks from across the valley to our Tim's Coats Drive. We got them out and headed to the folks who need them very quickly today. Volunteers with Catholic Charities came by our Channel 5 studios and picked up the items that have been donated over the last few days. And we're getting them out as quickly as we can. Loaded up the trucks and took them off. We're told these items are going to be handed out to the needy immediately. They'll go out today and I think by first thing tomorrow all of these things will be gone. These are, again, coats that folks have brought into us over the last week or two. Getting them out now so the folks who uh, need them will have them when it gets cold tonight and tomorrow. If you've got a coat you don't need anymore, maybe you got 
got a new one for Christmas and want to take that old one and give it to somebody who needs it, take it to one of the participating dry cleaners on the screen all across the valley. They'll get them fixed up as quickly as possible so we can get them out to the folks across the valley who need them. Please help. Please contribute to Tim's Coats. Good time to do it. 30th year for Tim's Coats. A long project and still going strong. And it's nights like tonight that we do this for because you don't get like this very often. Hard to justify spending a lot of money on a coat when you only need it once or twice a year at most. And tonight, wind chill advisory is in effect for all of the valley between 3 and 10 a.m. Wind chill values are going to drop down to between 20 and 30 degrees. Just north of us, a freeze warning. Kennedy County also has the wind chill advisory, but the four valley counties all under that advisory until the early morning hours. And that's because that front is sneaking through as we speak. The temperature's now still mild. We're still in the 60s, but they will drop and they're going to drop just gradually throughout the night. During the evening hours will be in the 50s and the 40s. And by tomorrow morning, we're going to be in the 30s across the entire area. These are the forecast lows, but it's going to take all night to get there. It's not going to be in the 30s at 10 o'clock tonight, but it probably will be at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to stay there much of the day tomorrow. By afternoon, we might bounce back two or three degrees, might hit the mid 40s, but that's about it. So a cold day tomorrow with windy conditions. That's what's prompted that wind chill advisory until 10 a.m. After that, the wind should die down. Temperatures might go up a little bit. We've seen some light rain and drizzle, some mist across the area. You see nothing significant over the valley right now, but there is that mist that just makes you use the wipers about every 10 seconds. That's about it. Cloud cover's thick, though. The front just kind of oozing through, and as it does, the cold air just builds down in. Wind is still with us in the morning. Wind dies as the day goes on, but the cold weather doesn't go away. It's with us tomorrow. Then look what happens Friday. Still cold, but look at the green stuff. Boom! Friday just gets messy. From Friday into Friday night into Saturday, temperatures probably go down again just a little bit more by Saturday. So we go 45 optimistically 45 tomorrow again on Friday and then 42 on Saturday with even more rain. Look at the rain chances tomorrow just 40% but it goes 60 70 so it's just more widespread almost continuous from Friday into Saturday so just cold and messy across the area. The rest of South Texas you know you look for this big push of cold air and you look for the cold weather in San Antonio it's not really there yet even though the wind is strong out of the north the gust right now are up to 30 miles an hour in San Antonio so the cold air is pushing pushing southward, it's just taking its time doing so because we look at the panhandle readings up there in the teens and 20s. Look at the rest of the state. There you can make out really the leading edge of the cold air pushing southward. Look at that plunge of cold numbers. 19 Amarillo, 29 Abilene, Austin still 44. Again, the front pushes through tonight. The clouds and the rain linger into tomorrow. And then on Friday, low pressure develops right on our coastline and that develops or helps develop more rainfall. Look at that ice. Parts of Central Texas on Friday. I think Saturday ice from San Antonio all the way to Houston could be an issue. No ice here, just rain and cold temperatures. But if you're traveling, San Antonio, Houston, Austin, Friday or Saturday you may run into some icing problems on highways up there. Tonight, 38 for a low wind chill advisory for the early morning hours, only 45 for a high tomorrow. We stay cloudy and cold. Friday, 45 again. Rain increases into Saturday. It's even colder, only 42. And then we finally bounce back into the 50s Sunday and Monday, but the normal high this time of year is 70. Nowhere close anytime soon. That's your updated First One Five forecast. Did Air Asia get that crucial weather data before its flight left the ground? We have some facts that show it did not. Air Asia is now scrambling to answer some pretty tough questions. Stick with us. El Pollo Loco's under 500 calories entrees are loaded with flavor, like our chicken and shrimp tostada. But they're also low calorie, like our chicken and kale salad. They're more and less at, at the, the same, same time. time. Try our new under 500 calories menu, El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. When you want a dependable truck, you want the most awarded pickup of 2014. You want the truck from the family of the most dependable, longest lasting full-size pickups on the road. You want the Chevy Silverado, made of high-strength dependability. Now get 0% APR for 60 months, or current GM owners can trade up to get 6,500 total value on this Silverado. See your Rio Grande Valley Chevy dealers. Hi, I know you're hurt pretty bad, and, and I can help you get everything you need. Huh? Just sign here. I'm Jesse Gonzalez. Don't fall for the case runner scam. It's illegal for a lawyer, doctor, or their runner to contact you after an accident. Case runners work with greedy doctors and lawyers to squeeze every dollar out of you. Your settlement can be stolen. 
Don't be a victim. Talk to a lawyer you can trust. Call the J. Gonzalez Law Firm at 1-800-CAR-CRASH. El Pollo Loco's three-course family meal comes with your choice of a super salad, like our corn chowder or Mexican cob, and new chocolate churros, which sort of makes you the jefe. But you still can't man the grill. New eight-piece three-course family meal. El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste it. The search crews found the tail section of Air Asia Flight 8501. These pictures taken by divers. The search chief confirmed the find by the lettering on it. Yeah, you can see the lettering of the A. It looks identical to the Air Asia flight. Find and, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say finding the tail section is significant because yeah. that's where the black boxes are located. And the boxes will tell investigators what the pilots were saying and doing up to the time of the crash. It's also going to show us what happened to the plane systems just before it went off of radar. The plane took off December 28th from Surabaya, Indonesia. The 162 passengers on board were destined for Singapore. Half hour later, the pilot asked air traffic control to change paths because of bad weather. Then moments later, that's when the plane dropped off the radar. A distress call was never received. Another body was pulled from the sea. That brings the total number of recovered remains to 40. Air Asia is set to offer every family of each victim about $100,000. You know, the loss of Air Asia Flight 8501 prompted increased scrutiny of the airline. Uh, specifically, the way Air Asia pilots receive weather information. Yeah, wind speed, cloud cover, some of the data the pilots on Flight 8501 had at their fingertips, or did they? CNN's David Malko explains. This is where experts pull together critical weather material for planes flying out of Surabaya. And this is the report put out early that Sunday morning by Indonesia's official weather agency. The report for that fateful day predicting towering cumulus clouds, which forecasters say can cause dangerous updrafts, ice and lightning. The weather patterns we're seeing here, the, the cumulonimbus clouds, the cold temperatures, the wind speeds at these altitudes, it's typical for this time of year in Indonesia, right? We're in monsoon season, so this is not unusual. Yeah, this is not unusual. Experts say an experienced pilot would be familiar with those patterns, and there's no way he would knowingly fly into a thunderstorm. When the station chief shows us this logbook, we learn more about how the weather data may have reached the crew of Flight 8501. In this column, there is the name of airline and the times, take the up, up, pick up the the flight document. The day of the crash, December 28th, um, did Air Asia come to pick up the weather report? No. The airline says it has access to the same report online. In a statement obtained by CNN, its president writes, Air Asia Indonesia receives and disseminates the weather report that comes from the exact same source as the hard copy version made available at the station. He goes on to say, our dispatch process mirrors the dispatch practices of numerous airlines globally. The airline's handling of the weather report, according to an Indonesian government source, now part of the investigation. David Molko, CNN, Surabaya, Indonesia. We told you earlier this week that the airline did not have permission to fly that day in the zone where the plane crashed. Pilots flying out of Indonesia are now required to have a face-to-face -face briefing about weather with the flight operations officer. We'll be right back. I'm injury attorney Louis Patino. If you've been seriously injured in an accident and the thought of medical bills piling up is keeping you awake at night, call Patino Associates. If I take on your case, I'll give you an interest-free loan that you don't have to repay unless I win your case. That's how confident I am. We gave people a mind-blowing ride in what they thought was our most advanced Ultima race car. Then, we just blew their minds. It's just crazy that this is like the car. I was just it. The 2015 Nissan Altima with blind spot warning and zero gravity seats. Choose the 38 MPG Highway Altima, starting at just 22300 Altima, from the most fuel-efficient lineup in America. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Nissan, innovation that excites. There's never been a better time to try Time Warner Cable. With HD content you love to watch virtually anytime, anywhere. Ultra-fast internet at the speed you need. An unlimited nationwide calling. All together for the first time for $89.99 a month. Plus, enjoy big Hollywood blockbusters from Epix. Now with free installation and TV equipment included. That's a savings of over $900. 
Try it, love it, or your money back guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I'm injury attorney Louis Patino. If you've been seriously injured in an accident and the thought of medical bills piling up is keeping you awake at night, call Patino Associates. If I take on your case, I'll give you an interest-free loan that you don't have to repay unless I win your case. That's how confident I am. Well, it's going to stay cloudy. It's going to stay cold the next few days. Look at that. Highs of 45 tomorrow and Friday, then only 42 on Saturday. Pretty good period of rain from Friday into Saturday as well. But it all starts with our cold front, which will slide through tonight. By tomorrow morning, readings will be in the mid to upper 30s. Wind chill values in the 20s with a little bit of light rain, a little mist around the area. Tomorrow starts on a cold note across the valley, and we don't rebound until the second half of the weekend. A close look at that seven-day forecast again with all the updates coming up at 6 o'clock. I know our crews for Channel 5 News this morning are already ramping up coverage because of the cold weather tomorrow yeah. morning, so be sure to tune in beginning at 4.30 a.m. Thanks for joining us. Have yourself a great evening. Bye-bye. Captioning brought to you by Channel 5 and Clark Chevrolet McAllen. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tim Smith. Do you have the KRGB weather app? It's interactive. You can track storms headed right towards your neighborhood with live radar. In fact, you can check the weather for any place you want. Check out the 10 day forecast. One touch delivers hour by hour weather. You can see video forecasts and even submit your very own weather photos. It's the fast way to get your official forecast. Download the free app available for Android and iOS devices. Supported by McDonald's and Payne Auto Group. Peter Piper Pizza Valley White has teamed up with Channel 5 to help teach the children. It's Teach the Children Appreciation Day this Thursday, and 10% of all sales that day will be donated to Teach the Children. So mark your calendar and head to Peter Piper Pizza for some great tasting pizza or enjoy the lunch buffet. And remember, your purchase will be helping Needy Valley kids with school supplies and clothing. Teach the Children Appreciation Day this Thursday at Peter Piper Pizza Valley Wide. Thank you, Rio Grande Valley, for making KRGV Channel 5 News number one. From morning until night, more people depend on Channel 5 News than any other station in the valley. Number one. 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 And we thank you. You're watching KRGV, Channel 5, Westlaco. Welcome to World News Tonight, terror in Paris and breaking developments right now. The masked gunman, we now learn two brothers, storming a newspaper, allegedly calling out names one by one, and then taking aim. Then police targeted two. Our team in Paris on the urgent manhunt, the worldwide terror war, and now the concerns here at home. Also tonight, the horror on the highway. The family in a minivan dragged 16 miles by a tractor trailer in this weather. 200 million Americans now locked in a deep freeze. Another earthquake in this country, 11 in just 24 hours. Is this the sign of something bigger? And an ABC News exclusive. She played Bill Cosby's TV wife. Tonight, her first TV interview. Felicia Rashad on Bill Cosby. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with the urgent manhunt after that precision attack carefully planned out in one of the most iconic cities in the world. Twelve people gunned down, murdered, some of their names called out one by one. Tonight, authorities know who they're looking for after two gunmen wearing all black sprinting through this Paris street with those automatic weapons. Opening fire on police to an officer right there wounded on the ground. We're not going to show you what happens next. But then moments later, the suspects afterward carefully getting into this car and taking off. Tonight, thousands on edge, others gathering across Paris. This evening, we've learned how they broke into that building, forcing a mother holding her child to enter the security code. We have team coverage tonight. The concerns right here at home. But first, ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, reporting in from Paris. 
Today, in the streets of Paris, terrorists wearing ski masks and carrying automatic weapons firing a hail of bullets. The deadliest attack France has seen in decades unfolding here at the offices of Charlie Hebdo, a satirical news.